And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and to everybody on YouTube. We have a brand new expansion coming on Wednesday. It is Call of the Mountain. I'm gonna give a little bit of an expansion breakdown here for those of y'all that don't know. We're gonna have 89 total new cards, 82 non-champions and seven champions on um, August 26th. And that so uh, that expansion will be called Call of the Mountain. There's going to be three expansions coming up. It's an entire set, and the entire set of these three expansions is called Call of the Mountain as well. The, just the first expansion has the same name. We don't know what expansion 2 or expansion 3 will be called. They will both be 40 cards, and they'll be in October and then December. So in two months in October and two months December. So that's that's how Call of the Mountain breaks down, If uh, just in case you weren't aware of that. But what we're going to do today is we're going to be talking about all of the cards, how they fit in in Runeterra. Um, for this video, we're going to be talking about just the Freljord cards. That's what we're going to be doing here. And then you can see on the left-hand side, we're going to be talking about just the Freljord cards. And then we'll have a video with the Ionia cards, the Shadow Isle cards, and then a, a much longer video with all of the new Targon cards. Targon is the brand new region coming to Legends of Runeterra from the Call of the Mountain set. All right, so with Freljord, we have uh, 10 new cards. We're gonna be starting, um, I know this isn't like the, the best order, but we're gonna be starting right here with our champion. So we're gonna be talking about the champion first. <clears throat> and uh, that is Trundle. So it's a five mana, four, six with regeneration. When I'm summoned to create an ice pillar in hand, and it levels up whenever you play an Ice Pillar. So we're definitely going to need to know what Ice Pillar is. Um, but just just the body, 4-6 um, with regeneration, that's a good body for a 5-mana card. We see a lot of 5-mana cards be 5-5s. Five that's kind of like the baseline of the most played 5-mana cards. And so a 4-6, you know, it, it bounces off a 5-5. Five five. But with Trundle having the regeneration, Trundle will turn back into a 4-6 after it would bounce off a 5-5, and the 5-5 would be a 5-1 afterwards, because, you know, it would not have regeneration. So a pretty good body. Um, a lot of, like, like even, like, the challenge, like those kind of challengers at the 5 mana slot, like, they're doing 5 damage. But then some of your other champions, maybe, like, your Swain or Thresh that are 3-6, Trundle is a 4-6, but has the regeneration, so... We, you know, can tussle with those fairly, uh, fairly well. So yeah, Trundle's body, just to start with, looks pretty good. And then you also get to create a free card in hand. So that's always good, like, whenever you whenever you play a card and it replaces itself immediately, that's always a good thing, too. So looks to be a pretty good champion here. Um, it says, you know, the level up is we're playing our Ice Pillar. So let's, uh, let's check out what the Ice Pillar is. So Ice Pillar, um, now... This is, like, there's no rarity here. This is not going to be a card that you can uh, just put into your deck. Normally, this is a card that's only created from Trundle. And so this is an 8 mana 0 8, which obviously that's not good. Vulnerable, well, that's not good. But then whenever you play it, you refill 8 mana. So that means that it really just costs 0. Once you can hit, once you hit turn 8 and you have 8 mana, you can play this for free. It does, you know, it takes up like your priority, right? Like you play it, now your opponent has priority again, and then it goes back to you. So it does take your priority, but it doesn't cost any mana, and you get an 08, which is a great blocker. Even even though it has vulnerable, like it still is a great blocker. It's not like um it's not like a powder keg, where a powder keg uh you know is vulnerable, but then also just can't block normally. It's like if your opponent just has a 5-5. Five five, and you want to block it, you can. You can just block it with your 08, you know, even if they don't want you to. All right, then it also has a play ability and a round start ability, give the strongest enemy vulnerable this round. So that's a really nice play ability. I mean, it's just, you know, you're basically just getting a free huge blocker. Um, whenever you play, you get to give the strongest enemy vulnerable this round. And if you are playing it on your defensive turn when you do not have the attack token, then the next turn when you would have the attack token then at round start um you'd still get to give the strongest enemy vulnerable this turn so the ice pillar's doing a lot for zero mana effectively right you know like it it says it costs eight 
and that's an important thing to say that it costs eight for some other cards that we will talk about later it says it costs eight but it really effectively costs zero and you know it does, it does some good stuff it, get, it can um you know it can keep you alive and also just give you some more value so that's that's a you know that's a pretty nice free card to create with trundle then it's basically going to be a free card to play as well um yeah so that's so you know good card here all right so then our trundle levels up because we played our ice pillar and sorry there we go so now our trundle levels up because we played our ice pillar so now trundle is a five mana five seven with overwhelm now still has regeneration but now we got overwhelm which is another really good quality keyword because um, you don't like it's hard to block five seven regeneration right like you probably want to just throw like a one one in front of a five seven regeneration but we got overwhelmed so now if you block with a you know now you kind of need to block like a five five so you don't take damage but then the trundle regenerates to be a five seven again that's a really good um combination of keywords put together and of course again if you sundle if you summon a trundle <laughs> try to say summoned and trundle together if you summon a leveled up trundle then you will again create an ice pillar in hand and now whenever it attacks you also get to grant me plus one plus zero for each eight plus cost card you behold so now we're attacking for more than five we can attack for a bunch all right so behold is a new keyword what behold means is having basically having cards that you can see cards that are either in play or cards that are in your hand so cards that whenever you're looking at the screen you can see that cost eight plus mana that are on your side not on your opponents of course um so if the ice pillar is in play that costs that counts as one or if the ice pillar is in your hand that counts as one as well because it's beholding eight plus cost cards and this is an eight plus cost card um and so yeah so like with the ice pillar this thing attacks as a six seven and then if you have more it can attack for even more oops um, so I'm I'm definitely pretty excited about Trundle. I think this is a really good card. Um, another good for all your champion. Just the, I think the stats are going to be deceptively strong with Trundle and the regeneration. There's a lot of damage base removal running around in Legends of Runeterra currently, um, and Trundle is going to be really difficult to get rid of with that like you're gonna have to get it in combat and then also have a spell immediately and then of course freljord is your region with elixir of iron that's like a great protection spell also so yeah trundle looks pretty strong um uh like this and and oh yeah that's a good good call there grace claw that was something i didn't mention um when this says attack grant me plus one plus zero as you can see it doesn't say like until end of turn or anything that's a permanent buff so whenever you attack with a trundle and let's say let's say you just have the ice pillar nothing else so now your trundle go you know gets plus one plus zero so now it's a six seven that's attacking it will be a six seven, you know if it survives it'll be a six seven for good and you know whenever it regenerates it'll go back to a six seven then the next time you attack let's say you have two and then you get attack again now it's an eight seven and so on so that's that's going to be permanent buffs there to trundle um so pretty awesome pretty awesome champion this is definitely uh, one of the champions i'm excited about i mean honestly all the all the new cards look pretty sweet just because you know it's also new cards but this one looks like one of the stronger champions okay so now from here um let's actually go let's go up so like this this as you can as you can see this is uh this is filtered by mana cost going mana cost going down i want to start with let's start with the lower mana cost cards and work our way up because usually the lower mana cost cards kind of see a little bit more play than the top end um for the most part you know just how mana curves work so let's start with troll scavenger now so these are the other frail yord cards um, a two mana one three whenever I'm summoned if you behold an eight plus cost card grant me plus three plus zero so again um, another another reason to play eight plus cost cards we get a nice plus three plus zero on here and that's a permanent buff so you could have a two mana four three if you have an eight plus cost card in hand so that's that's basically um, like four three that's a really good size for a three mana card 
<laughs> you know, and that's that's like a what, yeah, like that's like the biggest that like three mana cards for the most part are because you know like they're not because we had the one three mana four four and that got um, nerfed down to a three four the uh, loyal badger bear. And so, like, there's, like, some 3-mana 4-3 overwhelms and stuff like that. But getting a 2-mana 4-3, that is pretty awesome. Um, but it's not always going to be that 8-plus cost card. So I, I'm i not sure about this one because while 2-mana 4-3 is great, think about all the times that this is going to be 2-mana 1-3. Like, let's say you just don't have an 8-plus cost card in hand because, you know, you, like, whenever you mulligan... When you're making your mulligan decisions at the beginning of the game, you don't usually keep your expensive card in your hand. And so let's say you you mulligan and you you know have like some cheaper stuff, and then you know you want to play a troll scavenger and it's just a one three. A two mana one three is not a playable card, right? Like we're not playing we're not playing that at all. Um <clears throat> Yeah, so you'd you'd probably I guess you would I guess if you are playing a Troll Scavenger deck, you would not mulligan an A plus cost card. <clears throat> you know, the most obvious one, yeah, is probably War Mother's Call. Like that's that's the one they're probably thinking is like a, a good defensive card against War Mother's Call. But still, even if you want it to be a defensive card in your like your War Mother's Call deck, you'd probably rather it be a three four than a four three. So I don't know. Freljord's got some good stuff. At two mana, you're looking at like Avaros and Sentry, which is already an awesome card. And so it's like how many, like, you know, because Avaros and Sentry, of course, gives you that card advantage. So how many of the two mana cards are we going to want in a War Mother's Call deck? Probably not that many. So I would, I would not be surprised if Troll Scavenger does not end up making any deck, to be honest. Um, but, uh... You know, we'll see. You know, if if it turns out that the behold an eight plus cost card is super easy, and this is very reliably a four three, then we're gonna start seeing it a lot. So it's gonna really be how reliable, like how reliable is that behold an eight plus cost card? If it's not that reliable, like this would have to be something that's like a four three, like three fourths of the time or better that you're playing it. You know, like if if like you know, 75% of the time that you're playing this or better, this is a 4-3 on turn two, you know, then, then we start getting to where this is where you want to play this card. If it's, you know, less than that, because even if it's like 50-50, we're probably not playing the Troll Scavenger. That'd be my guess. Um, all right, we're going to be going going from uh, right to left. I'll, I'll have the cursor on the card that I'm talking about also. Um in case you, you know, in case uh, you kind of like join it in or get lost or anything like that. So we got Troll troll Chant up next. So it's a two mana burst speed spell. Give an ally plus zero, plus two, and give an enemy minus two, minus zero this round. I think this card's pretty strong. So Elixir of Iron is a wonderful spell that's one mana burst speed, give an ally plus zero, plus two. I think this card's a little worse than Elixir of Iron because that extra mana. But for the price of that extra mana, you also get to give an enemy minus two, minus zero this round. So that can help you out in combat as well. I think for the most part, I'd rather have Elixir of Iron than Troll Chant in decks. But this gives you another option. Like, you know, it may not be bad to be playing Elixir of Iron's four, five, and six. I think that's probably going to be pretty good also. Now you do need another thing that's kind of worrisome about troll chant is you do need two targets for this you have to be able to give an ally plus zero plus two and you have to be able to give an enemy minus two minus zero so if you just have like your unit in play and you're you know you have you know like you have a, a three two in play and your opponent tries to mystic shot your three two you can usually like elixir of iron you'd be able to use your elixir of iron and protect it if they don't have anything in play, you can't just use your troll chant to protect it, because you do have to give an enemy minus two, minus zero um, this round. And so, yeah, so, right, so you can't just give your enemy minus two, minus zero, and not have an ally, and you can't just give your ally and not have an enemy. So there, there does need to be an ally and an enemy in play to be casting troll chant. But with that being said, for two mana, that's a really useful card, especially in combat... Um, 
in a in a deck like where you're playing a lot of units and attacking with a lot of units like maybe like a demacia Frelior deck um where you're curving out with units where you're going to be in combat and then this can help you win two different combats like maybe you keep one ally alive with a plus zero plus two and then somewhere else in a different combat you give an enemy minus two minus zero this could be worth you know this could be a combat trick that could be worth multiple units for only two spell mana which is pretty awesome so, so i do expect this to see a, a pretty decent amount of play um but I don't, I don't think it's necessarily just supplanting Elixir of Iron as the go-to protection spell in Freljord decks because of the need to have an ally and an enemy in play. And, you know, it's just twice as much mana. You know, two instead of one. But in decks that are trying to get into combat a lot and have multiple bodies in combat, this can really help you win multiple combats. Um... And yeah, it works. Yeah, it can work really good with single combat with with the other spells. Single combat, yep. Calling strike, yep. Yeah, so calling strike. Uh, yeah, you can you can do that for sure. You can um, you know give. You know, it's just like just like frostbite plus calling strike. Anything that reduces the power does pair well with calling strike. Um, for sure. Um, some people in Twitch chat are saying that they think that you can play this without an enemy. You can still give your ally plus zero plus two. So I may be wrong about that, but I don't think from reading how this card reads, I don't think you would be able to, um, be able to do the one half without the other half. So I, I think you have to have both. I guess only, you know, we'll have to play it to really find out. <clears throat> um, no, I, I, I don't, I don't know, there may, maybe somebody else knows. Um, yeah, I think this would be, you, you click your person to give a plus zero, plus two, then you have to click an enemy to give them minus two, minus zero. So our next card is Faces of the Old Ones, 2 mana O2, round start. If you behold an 8 plus cost card, get an extra mana gem this round. So the obvious thing that this is similar to, that we can compare it to, is Weirding Stones. Weirding Stones costs 3 mana and is an O4 and just gets you an extra mana gem. You don't have to have any kind of tricked up claws. Just round start, you're getting the extra mana gem. This card is much worse than that in every way, except for mana cost. We get to play this on turn two and not on turn three. Um, but then it's an O2, so it can't block nearly as well as an O4. An O2 basically doesn't get to block anything. So it can't attack and it can't block. <laughs> so it really can't do anything. Um, it's very weak against challengers. Like, you know, Flea Feather Tracker just eats this. That's not something that's ideal. Um, uh, no, you cannot do transfusion with one ally, no. Um, concerted strike you can do with one. That is true. Um, but you have to, with concerted strike, you have to have an ally and an enemy, right? It's so like it's, it still requires the two targets. Um, so we'll see. So the thing is, like, Weirding Stones doesn't see that much play, but maybe we're getting to, like, more... With having... Being able to combine Faces of the Old Ones and Weirding Stones, and you know, maybe we're getting to more of a critical mass of ramp cards to be able to make ramp a more um, reliable strategy. But still, even, even then, like, a lot of the ramp decks just, like, don't even play Weirding Stones. Uh, they just play the... 5 mana 1 Catalyst of Aeons. I don't know, I was blinking for a second there. Usually just play Catalyst of Aeons. Now, the thing about Weirding Stones and Catalyst of Aeons is that if you don't, if you save your spell mana for turn 1 and turn 2, you can play Catalyst of Aeons on turn 3. 
With Weirding Stones, you have to wait till turn three to play it. It's a three mana unit. So they both kind of take up that same spot, that turn three. With Faces of the Old Ones taking, you know, being a turn two card, you are able to play face, you know, if you save your spell mana from turn one, play Faces of the Old Ones on turn two, round start, if you behold that, you get the extra mana gem. So on turn three, you'll have four mana gems. And so that then you can use your one spell mana you save from turn one, you can still cast Catalyst of Aeons on turn three. And therefore, on turn four, if you have faces and the Catalyst, you'll have six mana on turn four. So you're looking at like turn four, spending, you know, playing six mana cards, you know, in Nivea or whatever you want. Um, so you are, so this can be a ramp spell that you can play while still playing Catalyst of Aeons on turn three, like you were before, and being able to ramp farther. Now that does require this Faces of the Old Ones to survive multiple turns, being an O2. Just not, I'm not um, convinced that this will be able to survive the multiple turns like that. Um, so, so I'm not too excited about this Faces of the Old Ones. I, you know, with Weirding Stones kind of proving to basically see no play. Um, Face of the Old Ones does look a lot worse than that, so I, I'm not expecting this card to see much play. Alright, next card, Call the Wild. Three mana, burst. For the top four cards of your deck, draw each Yeti, Poro, and Elnuk, then shuffle the rest into your deck. Alright, so we get we get a another way to help out Yetis, Poros, and Elnuks. That sounds pretty sweet with me. So this this doesn't this isn't going to make Yetis, Poros, or Elnux competitive, um, like super competitive, right? Like this is going to make them like part of like the tier system that that you're really worried about um, playing at the top of the ladder. I don't think, but it's a nice meme tier enabler, which I you know as you all know I play tons of meme tier decks, and so I like how we have something here. Um, so. Um, so yeah, so we're, uh, <clears throat> the thing is, so you can put it in any of these, these style decks, Yetis, Poros, or Elnux. You're probably not combining them with, with any of them. As far as Elnux go, we still only have the two Elnux, and draw, and with the two Elnux, there's Troop of Elnux, which that's a good card that you want to draw, but then there's the Bull Elnuk, which you want to keep Bull Elnuk. You want to have as many Bull Elnuks in your deck as you can. So whenever you play the Troop of Elnuks, it puts the Bull Elnuks in, in to play. You don't want to draw your Bull Elnuks. So I really don't think the Call of the Wild even fits that great in the Elnuk deck. But it does fit great with Yetis and Poros. Because Poros, you can play a bunch of Poros um, if you want. And with Yetis, you can have a bunch of cards that can put Yetis into your deck. And this allows you to draw the Yetis. So I think this works. This does work really well with Yetis and Poros, but not so much with Elnux. Um, okay. So our next card here, Troll Ravager. Four mana, three, five. When I'm summoned, if you behold an eight plus cost card, grant me regeneration. This is just a common... <clears throat> And I'm not expecting this one to see too much play either. Um, we have at four mana, um, a three five regeneration is is perfectly fine. This seems like a really good limited card, like a, a really good card for um, the expeditions, getting that three five regeneration. But I think for constructed play, maybe not so much. You know, it's just it's just a little on the weak side. It just being a common here. Um, but yeah, that, that's where I kind of expect the Troll Ravager. Just be a nice body for Expedition, something that you have a lot of kind of thing. Um, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll check out Aurelian Soul after after this. Alright, so we just talked we talked about Trundle already. Um, yeah, I, I really like a Trundle, and Trundle seems to Seems to pair with all sorts of like different Freljord and Noxus champions and everything. I think I think this is just going to be a really solid card because of the just kind of reiterate on Trundle. Just a really solid card because of the rate uh, that you get with your power 
and health that it can just kind of fit anywhere um, you know in all sorts of different Freljord decks it's just going to be really versatile it's obviously a lot different from Sejuani but it's kind of similar to Sejuani where you can put Sejuani with so many different things and it just fits because Sejuani has such good rate I think Trundle is similar to that it just has such good rate that you can put Trundle kind of anywhere um, and even with the the this attack thing even if you're not really focusing on behold too much with a plus cost cards you can still be playing trundle because trundle will create its own ice pillar um for that and it'd still just be a really good body all right so we have augur of the old ones so six mana five five that has overwhelm and regeneration great keywords as we've talked about with trundle so overwhelm and regeneration for the same card that is awesome and whenever you play it, if you behold an 8 plus cost card, grant an ally overwhelm and regeneration. I'm a big fan of this Augur of the Old Ones. Unfortunately, it's a pay, it's a play um, ability and not a summon ability. So if you're pairing it with like War Mother's Call, you don't, whenever it enters, you don't get it with the summon ability. But that is pretty awesome that you can get any other ally that's in play, give, give them overwhelm and regeneration. Because that could be champions also. So you can give that to, like, Vladimir. Now, Vladimir can, of course, have regeneration when it's leveled up. But a lot of people with Vladimir, one one kind of problem with Vladimir is whenever you attack, like, people always put, like, their little 1-1 one -one in front of Vladimir. Giving Vladimir overwhelm is awesome. Another great Noxus champion to have overwhelm would be um, Swain. You know, Swain with overwhelm, especially a leveled up Swain, getting the overwhelm would allow it to you know, deal Nexus damage, which then would um, have its ability go off of dealing three damage to everything. But still, even giving this to something like um, Averroes and Hearthguard, with turn five, you play Averroes and Hearthguard, turn six, you play Augur of the Old Ones, give your Averroes and Hearthguard uh, Overwhelm and Regeneration. That's awesome. And you know, like there's, there's just a lot of good things you can do with this Augur of the Old Ones. Um, especially in a region like Freljord with your Avros and Hearth Guards and your Omen Hawks. And you have you have the ability to make some huge units in Freljord with all of the plus one plus ones to your units in your deck. Um, even just putting it on Enraged Yeti, like giving Enraged Yeti Overwhelm, you know, and Regeneration. Like that's that's amazing. This seems to work perfectly with so many good Freljord cards. Um, of course, it is a six mana card, but it does just kind of fit... Um, a lot of those cards, like in, if you think about like the Ash Sejuani kind of deck, <clears throat> um, and uh, yeah, so I really like an Augur of the Old Ones. Uh, no, the full set is not spoiled by now, um, but we know all of like the Freljord cards. We're we're gonna be going with what we know. Um, so yeah, definitely liking this card. Our next card, 7 mana, slow speed, revitalizing roar. Pick a unit in your hand to reveal, heal your nexus by its power, and then if you are enlightened, reduce its cost to zero. Okay, so let's kind of talk about this one. So it's slow speed at 7 mana, and all we're doing is healing a lot, and then we can also reduce some a unit to zero. So we need to have a really expensive unit in hand, um, that could be, you know, when we're talking about Freljord, maybe that is, um, and it's got to have a lot of power. The one that, you know, people are kind of pointing out, maybe They Who Endure, right? Like maybe your They Who Endure is a 12-12, and you would uh, play this, you would gain 12 life because of your They Who Endure being a 12-12. And then also now your They Who Endure costs zero mana, and so then you could just play it right after this Revitalizing Roar. The problem is, is there's going to be a lot of times where you have Revitalizing Roar early in the game, or even if you draw it, like, like let's say you, you, you know, you're in top deck mode and you just top deck Revitalizing Roar, just going to do, does absolutely nothing. I, I feel like the card from Ionia that is similar, I don't know the name of it, that's seven mana, slow speed, gain seven life and draw a card, I feel like that is a more useful card. You're just always gaining seven and then rather draw a card than that enlightened 
Um, so, um, so yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see about revitalizing Roar, but I do not have any. <clears throat> um, I do not have any expectations for this card to see play. Now, if it, I guess how this could see play if if it was pick a card in your hand to reveal and then heal your Nexus by its, like by its mana cost, and then cost make it cost zero. Then we're talking like if this could if this could reveal War Mother's Call and make War Mother's Call cost zero, then we're talking about like this could be a real thing of you could have you know War Mother's Call <clears throat> costing zero. Of course, you'd have to be enlightened for that. But with it being units, um, I'm not so sure. Because uh, really, you need you need to have like units that would cost eight, nine, ten plus mana, but like. 10 is the very most any unit can cost, right? Like, you can't have 11 cost units because you need, because you can't use spell mana on units. Um, yeah. All right, again, we're going to, we're going to finish out with our Freljord cards. Here, we're recording a video. We're not, I'm not going to be checking out Aurelian Soul yet. All right, anyway, uh, next card, we're going right to left again. We got Uzgar the Ancient, 8 mana, 7-7. Seven, seven. It has Challenger and Regeneration. It's a pretty decent card. Challenger is really powerful. And I think uh, what's going to make this card so good is that it is an 8 mana card for these different cards that we just went over that say Behold an 8 mana card. This is a pretty decent 8 mana card. This is a good one to get from War Mother's Call. Um... 7-7 seven, seven Challenger can just kill any champion for the most part, right? And so, like, that's gonna, this is going to be a great removal spell for champions. You can kind of think of it like that. Like, it's just going to... You just... You know, all these, like, even 5-7s and 4-6 and 5-5 five, five champions and everything. You get to challenge them, kill them, and then regenerate Uzgar the Ancient. So normally... Normally this card, you know, would be just just fine, but I think it does have a higher ceiling because of the Behold 8 um, with all of these different cards. I think because of that Behold, this card can see more play. Um, but yeah, Regeneration is a great keyword. Challenge is a great keyword. Those are two really good, solid keywords. So yeah, Uzgar the Ancient, um, especially if you're able to ramp into it, of course. But yeah, I think that this fits these these different Freljord decks and what they're trying to do. Yeah, so the right, so that yes, the correct core deck. There's the seven four Overwhelm Challenger, and no one plays this card. And I think this card's going to be much better than that. Um, I think that having seven health and regeneration is is more valuable with a Challenger than than the four health and the Overwhelm now. Like, the, the 4 health and the Overwhelm, you're, you'd want to play that in a really aggressive deck, and basically it, you turn it into a Decimate. You know, like a, a more expensive, a little bit better Decimate. But this card just does a lot more things. It it kills Challengers and survives. Unlike the 7-4 doesn't kill anything and survive. It, doesn't, it never survives. But this can actually survive having the 7 health, so you can continually use it. And then also it has an archetype kind of built around it with these different cards carrying about eight plus cost spells so that's so that's another um plus that usgar the ancient has um it is yes it is it is expensive but being a reusable removal spell and that can be pretty good and yeah, it's very good with War Mother's Call. Yeah, it's a great thing to bring in with War Mother's Call. It's also in, in Freljord in the region that you know continually pumps things up. It also fit, fits great with Augur of the Old Ones. You know, Augur of the Old Ones can, you know, play. You behold an 8 plus cost card. So here's your 8 plus cost card, like Uzgar's in play. You play Augur, you give Uzgar Overwhelm. You know, that's a nice little combo. But you know, you're, you're going to need your 8 plus cost cards for your Augur of the Old Ones and uh, Uzgar. Probably a better way to pronounce that, I don't know, but... <laughs> so, yeah. 
Um, good card there. All right, and then finally we have Ice Quake, which Trundle's champion spell is also Ice Quake, as you can see. So Ice Quake is an eight cost spell. So it, you know, it helps you with the Behold stuff. And so that's key with the Behold for being the champion spell. That's key for Trundle. Um, like, especially if you think about like this over this uh, leveled up Trundle, how it says attack give me plus one plus zero for you know the eight plus cost spells. So if you have another Trundle or two in hand, when you have like one that's leveled up, those other Trundles that you have will be able to grant your uh, Trundle in play plus one plus zero. Anyway, Ice Quake, what it does is it gives all units minus three, minus zero this round, deal three to all units. So we have Avalanche's four mana deal two to all units. So in order to deal three to all units, we have to spend another four mana. So we have to double up the mana cost to do 50% more damage to all units. But you also give all units minus three, minus zero, if that is useful. That's usually the most useful, that give all units minus three, minus zero, that's usually the most useful on your opponent's attack turn. But usually whenever people have the attack token, especially this late into the game, they usually go straight to attacks and therefore the you're not able to play the slow speed spell first. Um, so no, Icequake does not seem amazing. I think it's an I think it's going to be fine for a champion spell. So like sometimes you'll be able to use it with Trundle um, and it does pair really like the thing that it's so, like, I don't think you're probably playing Ice Quake normally, like just like the spell. Probably going to be using it mostly with the champion spell. And then the thing that it, it works really well with is it does work with these trolls with the regeneration. I think that's that's the key here is that Augur of the Old Ones can give something regeneration. Trundle has regeneration. Uzgar has regeneration. And so whenever you're dealing three to all units, hopefully your trolls are surviving and they're able to regenerate their health where all of your opponent's units are either dying, because th three damage, is a, that's a good number to deal for sure. But if they're not dying, then they're going to be much weaker and about to die kind of thing. And yeah, it does give your own units minus three, minus zero as well. So I agree, that's that part's kind of awkward because if you play this like proactively on your attack turn to clear out a lot of small blockers, and you, you know, with the deal three to all units, then you're giving your own units that are free to attack now the minus three, minus zero. So that's pretty awkward as well. So I, I don't think this is really a card that like your War Mothers type decks are probably not playing the Ice Quake, but I think it's, it's a pretty decent champion spell where you will have situate, where it's, it's kind of like a bonus, right? Like it's, it's not something that you're really building your deck around exactly, but you'll have times where the Ice Quake can be a backbreaking spell with a deal three to all units, and you can kind of set that up also with what you're doing. Um, yeah, that's true, Agent I. Well, it does help Fearsome. I didn't think about that. So if you're playing a Shadow Isles Freljord deck, you could play this and then your fearsome units can get through. The problem is, is how are you having your fearsome units survive if they're all taking three damage? They're, you know, probably dying. They'd have to be, so they have to be bigger health. They'd have, have like bigger health fearsome units. Um, that could be kind of difficult. Um, but yeah, I think, I think for the most part in these kind of ramp decks, you're gonna be playing Avalanche, not Icequake. All right, so that's all the new cards from Freljord. Um, you know, we don't have a, a bunch of new cards, but uh, Trundle does look like a really powerful champion that you can just fit in with all sorts of stuff that's going on right now. And then I like a couple of these cards. I think Troll, Troll Chant will have a pretty big impact on the game. And then we'll kind of see with uh, Augur of the Old Ones and Uzgar. Uh, with those cards also, but um, I'm, not, I'm not sure, I'm not expecting like trolls to become a huge part of the metagame, like some of these other troll cards, um, but I think that Trundle can fit in a lot of decks and you can build around Trundle. Very good champion. All right, so that's, that's Freljord. 
Um, we are going to be going over Ionia next. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button and leave all those comments about all these new cards. What are you super excited about? You know, anything that I missed, anything we didn't talk about, you know, leave those comments over there. Uh, what do you want to see on Wednesday? You know, our first our first stream. I guess that's that's also another thing. Let me know, those of y'all on YouTube, what what videos do you want to see? What kind of decks do you want me to build? And I will get on I'll get on that. All right, but anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.